your heart and on your lips that you may confess your sins before him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Moved by deep sorrow to our very souls, O God, for our guilt weighs upon us, and sins are bending us down. Unto thy throne of mercy we ever humbly trod, filled with great pain and sorrow, heirs of the sins of Cain. Vainly we sought of this world fruitless consolation, vainly we have searched for comfort and the remission of our sins, for there never is true peace where there are transgressions. Neither is there happiness without God in conscience. Being therefore overwhelmed by our misery, O God, when our guilt weighs upon us and sins are bending us down, so at thy throne of mercy our knees we humbly bend, filled with great pain and sorrow, heirs of the sins of Cain. Let us pray. O merciful God, I thank you that you have not called me out of this world burdened with sin, but that you have called upon me to repent and amend my life. Assist me, O God, in the performance of this important task, that my confession may truly be the means of cleansing myself of sin and the beginning of a new spiritual life. Before you, I desire to make a confession of all my sins, but I realize that I am unable to do this of myself. Therefore, I invoke your divine help. O Holy Spirit, enlighten my mind with heavenly light that I may perceive all my sins. Refresh my memory that I may recall all my transgressions. Kindle in my heart a true contrition that I may sorrow sincerely over my sins and confess them with deep humility before my God, my confessor, and my church. And now please make an examination of conscience. Awaken in your heart a deep sense of sorrow. Resolve sincerely to amend your life. Repair any injury done to others. And thus, through a worthy confession, your sins will be forgiven. And now I ask that you please recite after me the act of confession. I confess to the Lord God Almighty. One in the Blessed Trinity, who by his Holy Spirit, Spirit permeates the universe, but above all, the soul of man. I confess before him and his holy church all the sins that I have committed in thought, word, and deed. I confess, I confess that, by sins, that by my sins I have severed the ties, severed the ties uniting, me uniting me with my Creator. With my creator. I, have I have disobeyed His holy laws. His holy laws. I, have I have wandered from the path of righteousness, path of righteousness. and thus brought injury thus brought to, myself to myself and to my neighbor. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, move to the depths of my soul, because of my many offenses, I am heartily sorry, I firmly resolve to amend my life, and with your help, O oh God, I earnestly desire to follow the road of life shown me by Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Forgive me, O merciful God, 
pardon me my sins. And you, Reverend Father, grant me absolution. My dear brothers and sisters, for the penance, for the confession that you have just made, I ask that this evening, along with your evening prayers of the Our Father and the Hail Mary, that you also ask God that you might grow in this new season of Advent and throughout the liturgical year. And so, I ask that you, if you are truly sorry and asking God for forgiveness, I ask that you strike your breast three times saying, God have mercy on me a sinner and I will grant you the absolution. May the Almighty God be merciful unto you, grant you remission of your sins, and lead you to life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, absolution, and remission of your sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with the power given unto me by him, I do absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merits of the Blessed Mother Mary and all the saints show you the way to eternal life. Remember this sacred moment in your life. Go in peace and sin no more. Amen. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the first Sunday of Advent in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. God told Abraham that through him all the nations of the world would be blessed because he trusted and put his hope in God. The Old Testament spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. He would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. We too believe in God's promise to send Jesus again to this world to establish his kingdom upon the earth. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place as we look at the light of this candle. We celebrate the hope we all have in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of Abraham and Sarah and all the patriarchs of old, you are our Father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, 
to make our hearts ready and to place our hope in you. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your hope with others. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Please be seated. To thee we come, O Lord, our God. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. God my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And for those of you who are not here during the general confession, I ask that you please make at this moment an examination of conscience. And now, let all of us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, for and in deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his power given unto me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for the world of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you spoke to your chosen people through the prophets and gave us in your Son the fulfillment of the hopes of Israel. May we be prepared for the day when all things will be subjected to him. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. 
let us pray. Merciful Father, as we observe the anniversary of the passing of our dear sister in blessed memory, Florence Midlicki, we ask for your grace and blessing. Accept her into your eternal kingdom and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. John, would you come forward and offer today's readings? Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall be secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. By my holiness, I swore once for all, I will never be false to David. His dynasty will continue forever, his throne like the sun and glory. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more, for you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and, fa and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy for carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. 
for that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you may have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man, the Gospel of the Lord. Now and forevermore, amen, the adventure of Lord Jesus Christus. <clears throat> the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. Words taken from the prophet Jeremiah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we begin a new liturgical year in the Christian Catholic tradition. And on this, the first Sunday of Advent, we will hear a new cycle of readings that we can reflect upon. And it should bring us a deeper understanding of our relationship with God. You know, as I have mentioned in the past, we have the uniqueness that as members of the Polish National Catholic Church, we have the Word of God as one of our sacraments in which it carries not only sacramental grace, but also sanctifying. And the word to sanctify means to make holy. And so we are illuminated by the wisdom as found within Holy Scripture. And that this gift, this grace from God, sanctifies and brings uh, each individual closer unto God. So let us begin. From man's fall in the Garden of Eden, there was a deep longing of man to be united again with God. Today, this longing is represented in our Advent wreath, which has four candles. Each candle represents approximately 1,000 years of this longing. The first candle that we lit today represents hope. Hope that God would send to his people a deliverer, the Messiah, the Christos, the Anointed One who would make things right with God and bring man back into the fold, back to the allegorical Garden of Eden. In these next four weeks, we will be reintroduced to the main characters of the Advent story. First, there are the prophets, who were God's spokesmen, who spoke about the coming of a deliverer. Then there is John the Baptist, who would be a witness to this eternal light, who would take upon himself the deliverer, 
the sins and offenses of mankind. Finally, there is Mary, who would give birth to this deliverer through the incarnation by the Holy Spirit, in which the Word became flesh, Jesus, of which he was named at his circumcision, as told by the angel. We read today from Jeremiah the prophet that God would fulfill the promise that he made to the house of Israel and Judah. We learn in the Old Testament that Israel became a divided nation following the reigns of King David. We also read in the New, in the Old Testament, that God would unite these two divided kingdoms under one Messiah, under one shepherd. Again, God's promise, first made to Abraham, that he would pass from his generation to the next, through Isaac, through Jacob, and finally, in the genealogy to Jesus, a shoot from the house of David, and a root from Jesse, who was David's father. This Tuesday, the church will celebrate the feast of St. Andrew. For, we, for me, one of my most favorite scripture passages in the New Testament is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 40 and 41, where Andrew, a disciple of John the Baptist, goes to his brother, Simon Peter, and says, We have found the Messiah. Can you imagine how excited Andrew must have been when he declared to his brother, We have found the Messiah. Now there were others who came before Jesus who claimed to be the Messiah. But when Jesus called Andrew and Simon Peter and the others, they knew that he was the Messiah, the fulfillment of the Old Testament and its prophecies. And they left everything behind, their livelihoods, their families, and followed the Messiah. So much pain, so much struggle, so much adversity in our world. From the time of deliverance of the children of Israel by Moses in Egypt, through the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 587 BC by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon to the occupation of Rome and Israel, there has always been a deep longing for the promise by God to be fulfilled. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. We know, trust, and believe that this expectation and desire was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus. I hope that during this Advent season, it may be a time for each of us to grow spiritually, more deeply in our faith, to see Jesus as our own personal Messiah that brings about our own salvation as has been told to us in Holy Scripture. And may, may each and every single one of us rededicate ourselves this day to walk with God. May this year be a year in which we all grow closer to know personally our Savior, our Deliverer, and be eliminated by the light of His grace and wisdom. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised, now and forevermore. Amen. Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. If you, Lord, mark our sins, Lord, you can stand. But with you in you is forgiveness, and so you are revered. my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of the Church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we prepare these gifts before you, help us to prepare our hearts and minds to receive your Son, we ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept these gifts which we offer to you in faith and trust. May this offering unite us with you 
and with your son's offering on the cross, which brings about eternal salvation. As we remember our sister this day, Florence Mintliki. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. Thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. For through the promise sending of Jesus Christ on earth to us, you revealed your goodness and unending love, sharing in the hope of the patriarchs and prophets. May we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming of the Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, we he join this day with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Most merciful Father, we humbly ask and pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present who faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin, Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and went spiritually and bodily 
in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so great for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the man of the host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, Remember our sister Florence Midlicky, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleeps in peace. To her soul and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done,
present and future and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious mother of god mary together with your blessed apostles peter and paul as also andrew and all the saints grant us peace in our day supported by the help of your mercy may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same jesus christ your son and our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit forever and ever of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated. May this commingling and consecration of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, Free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul into life everlasting. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love my Lord and Savior. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Receive the body and the blood of Christ.
Lord, what we have received on her lips may we receive mentally. In works of charity, one offers fine flour, and when he gives alms, he presents his sacrifice of praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you told us of your return to judgment at an hour unknown to us. Through the grace of this Holy Communion, help us to watch and to pray always, so that whether you come at dusk, at midnight, or at daybreak, we may be found among those who await you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our sister in blessed memory, Florence Midlicki, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity, with the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty, be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh 
and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God.